Watch out! A horrifying plasma tornado the size of 14 Earths has been observed by NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory. Its size is so incredible that even our planet looks like nothing besides it. The Sun was being showered with moon-sized globules of incandescent material by 14 piles of Earth-tall churning columns of plasma. No location on Earth even comes close to this type of cataclysmic event. This enormous plasma storm on the Sun's surface astounds and scares scientists. What led to this enormous solar tornado and what terrible effects will it have on Earth? Let's find out! An object that may be the tallest tornado in the solar system was caught by NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory as it swirled around the Sun's North Pole. Before bursting into a cloud of magnetized gas, the twisting filament of boiling plasma continued to develop in the Sun's atmosphere for three days, reaching a height of around 111,000 miles, 178,000 kilometers, or 14 Earths. Material from the Sun's atmosphere was thrown into the surrounding space when the solar storm collapsed. Rather than being caused by wind, this tornado is the result of the Sun's strong magnetic fields combining to form ferocious whirling structures that are considerably more terrifying than the tornado they silently control. This is a really huge scale that we are dealing with. It is the most recent in a string of astounding occurrences on the Sun as our star approaches the culmination of its 11-year solar cycle. Only the portion of the explosion that is visible is the tornado. The tornado was actually created by a magnetic structure that is much larger than what we can now observe. The Sun is a sizable ball of plasma and boiling gas made up of extremely hot charged particles. These generate magnetic fields as they orbit the Sun, which erupts through the solar surface. A few of these massive magnetic fields are fixed to the surface at numerous spots and extend in an arc into space. These points are referred to as prominences or filaments. Fortunately, the planet dwarfing tornado has spared our planet from its destructive might. Although it is 14 Earths tall, our planet is around 11,700 Earths from the Sun, and its course is far from Earth-bound. More so, a few astute amateur astronomers were able to confirm SDO's findings with some of the most breathtaking views of the enormous vortex ever captured. Solar tornadoes are another example of spots that tie this intangible magnetic field to the Sun in addition to prominences and filaments. The filaments eventually decay away or erupt into space. Charged particles were launched away from the Sun in this tornado's case when the filaments split apart, hurtling across space at incredible speeds. There might be an increase in auroras or problems with power systems if it were moving closer to Earth. However, since our planet was off course, there is little possibility of that happening here. Solar tornadoes may not actually spin, in contrast to our own tornadoes. Even though the word tornado implies the structure spins, this may not be the case. Basically, you have two options. Either there is a magnetic field-supported structure that is actually rotating, or what is being observed is hot plasma that is following a pre-twisted magnetic field and gives the impression that it is rotating but is actually moving up and down in the direction of a slight spiral. According to one notion, if there is actual rotation within the structure, this might set off or destabilize the entire structure and lead to an eruption. The incident was a breathtaking display, but it won't have an adverse effect on Earth. We are likely to witness more impressive solar occurrences in the years to come as the Sun approaches its solar maximum a peak in activity that occurs roughly every 11 years. Over the last few days, the Sun has been fairly productive. The six sunspots, darker, cooler regions of intense magnetic fields that are currently visible on the star's disk, were defined as moderate activity by the UK space weather forecaster Met Office. In the coming days, the greatest of these areas, which is situated close to the Sun's southeastern border, might produce solar flares and plasma explosions that could have an impact on Earth's space weather. Additionally, there are two coronal holes or openings in the magnetic field of the Sun that are currently ejecting a lot of fast solar wind from the Sun's upper atmosphere, corona. When this stream of magnetized gas interacts with the magnetic field of Earth in the next few days, it may cause geomagnetic storms. Even though the Met Office only predicts a moderate G1 geomagnetic storm, it may be sufficient to boost aurora displays at higher latitudes. Our Sun is essentially a light bulb that produces light by employing the elements it has generated on its surface as resistance. There was no optical light produced when the Sun originally formed since there was no resistance. All of it was gamma rays. 
Quark plasma, not fusion, is what makes up the core of our sun. The matter and space that make up this plasma operate as the infinitely powerful catalyst that the universe's most effective reaction ought to have. The strong interaction between quarks and space is able to be overcome to keep quarks apart indefinitely after they have been sufficiently distanced from a reaction. Instead, the sheer density and pressure of space are able to maintain this separation eternally. A field of sterile electron neutrinos operating at absolute zero pressure keeps the reaction running. The actual energy of the universe exists in this field. Gravity and every other form of energy we are aware of alter this field, but in the end, space ultimately triumphs. The second law of thermodynamics and the actual point of absolute zero are located there. Quarks and neutrinos were taken by our Sun, who then started fusing them there. As a result, the Sun produced its first neutrons and optically detectable light. These are the ring stars that researchers have seen. Once there are enough neutrons gathered on the surface, the first hydrogen starts to form. At that point, the continuously generating neutrons combine with the hydrogen utilizing the beta minus decay mechanism to produce the first helium. This universe only uses real fusion like this. The star gets darker as a result of the beta minus decay, which keeps producing heavier components until a surface forms and the light is put out. At that point, the entire watery atmosphere is permitted to develop. For at least a billion years, our universe effectively transformed into a huge catalytic converter. On the surface of our sun, an astounding variety of elements have been produced, including iron, Iron is a liquid at the temperature of sunspots. Gamma rays from the quark plasma core are pelting everything on the surface. Anything that prevents this radiation will cause mayhem when the energy tries to pass through it. Gamma ray bursts result from this and radiate toward our globe. Everything on the sun's surface is battling the gamma rays that are escaping and, as a result, is feeling the gravity of the field of space, which is using its own natural pressure to replace the energy that was emitted. The so-called Big Bang was actually just our cosmos transforming into a massive particle collider that spewed forth quark plasma shrapnel that became the galaxies we observe today. In essence, they were all formed as a single black hole. Each galaxy has its own unique size, shape, rotating rate and trajectory since quark plasma can take on several shapes. Centrifugal force was utilized by ours which was spinning to produce the world we see today. The energy originated from the collision, not from gravity. That is, the galaxy's expansion was given momentum by the collision. If one assumes that the entire universe is expanding, it produces an anisotropic expansion of matter that will appear to be an expanding cosmos that is expanding faster. This theory clarifies a number of Sun-related issues. The Sun has recently been blustering and billowing a lot, and some of its ejecta will be heading our way. On the Sun's surface, a number of coronal holes have formed, including one that is thought to be 30 times as big as Earth. These holes are directing solar winds at Earth, which have already started to arrive. Yes, the Sun's activity is increasing. We have never witnessed what is happening on the Sun, which is strange. Scientists don't know why, but over the past few weeks, a piece of the Sun's surface broke off and began to circle its North Pole, nearly like a big polar vortex. It is impossible to overestimate the implications for comprehending the dynamics of the Sun's atmosphere above 55 degree here. Thanks to the capabilities of the James Webb Space Telescope, the discovery is just the most recent in a string of intriguing space observations. Solar prominence, according to NASA, is a big brilliant feature that extends from the Sun's surface. Plasma is normally released when a structure becomes unstable and explodes outward, generating prominences which are made of hydrogen and helium. A vortex like this has never been observed, according to Scott McIntosh, a solar physicist and deputy director of the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado, who also observes that something strange typically occurs in the sun's 55 degree latitudes once every solar cycle. Solar cycles are regular 11-year variations in the activity of the sun, Things like solar radiation, solar material ejection, sunspots and solar flares change during this time. The northern prominence, which does arise precisely at the same location around the polar crown of the sun every 11 years, is what Macintosh referred to as a hedgerow in the solar plasma. 
But despite the fact that such hedgerows have been seen in solar plasma before, they have never produced a polar whirlwind like the one that was just seen. The specific explanation of the phenomenon is unknown, but scientists believe it has to do with the reversal of the sun's magnetic field. They also believe that the polar region plays a significant role in producing the magnetic field. According to McIntosh, it forms once per solar cycle near latitude 55 degrees and begins to advance toward the solar poles. It's pretty interesting. There is much why speculation surrounding it. Why does it only make one trip toward the pole, vanish and then suddenly reappear three or four years later in the same place? McIntosh added that because scientists can only watch the sun from the ecliptic plane or the plane in which the planets orbit, it is an area that cannot be directly examined. McIntosh thinks we might need a different mission to completely grasp what's going on at the Sun, despite the fact that the current Solar Orbiter project from the European Space Agency takes photographs of the Sun from inside the orbit of Mercury. On the other hand, the ESA-NASA Solar Orbiter mission has discovered intriguing hints as to the origin of solar magnetic switchbacks using new data from its closest visit to the Sun to date. The finding suggests a possible physical creation mechanism that could speed up the solar wind. Despite the fact that several spacecraft have passed over these mysterious regions in the past, data only permits a measurement at a specific point in time. As a result, the switchback structure and shape must be deduced from measurements of the plasma and magnetic field made at a single location. With the arrival of NASA's Parker Solar Probe in 2018, the number of solar switchbacks increased sharply. This strongly suggested that the rapid magnetic field reversals occur more frequently close to the Sun and raise the possibility that they are brought on by magnetic field kinks in the shape of an S. The phenomenon is called switchbacks because of its perplexing behavior. As to how these might form, several theories were put forth. Solar physicists may be moving closer to understanding the specifics of how the solar wind is driven and heated away from the Sun by comprehending switchbacks. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.